Welcome back. Um, I was hoping to have um, this with the ability to fire it up and run it without a turbocharger and uh, just kind of bench fire it, see where the leaks are, see where, uh, where it needs work and uh, what, what, what does work and what doesn't work. You know, make sure the injectors fire correctly. Um, just anything that I wouldn't want to deal with after I put it in the truck. But we're not there yet. I am still waiting on parts. Um, there is a uh, linkage that goes between this bell crank and this governor bell crank that is lost in the mail somewhere. Uh, it's about, about seven days out uh, from the day that it was supposed to get here. So anyway, in the meantime, I figured I would do some of the wiring um, on the truck and uh, to help me uh, do the swap. One of the most critical things when doing the swap is getting a good tack signal. I've heard a, a red, you know, many people having issues with their transmissions not shifting, um, with their alternators not working, with the air conditioning not working correctly. Especially critical in uh, the 6.0s and 6.4s because they have uh, two separate signals they have to get. Um, uh, they have to get a tack signal and a cam position signal, and those have to also be synchronized. Um, traditionally, a lot of these conversion kit companies, they sell a little tone ring wheel that goes on the front of the uh, balancer. And um, then they hook the signal up to that. They hook the uh, sensor up to it and replace the Hall effect sensor, which comes on the, the Cummins with um, like the Ford sensor or, you know, a, a different aftermarket sensor. And then, uh, you know, one conversion company offers a um, they use the factory Ford um, cam position sensor that mounts back in their uh, their plate back here. Um, the one I have is destroked and it does not have provision for that. With, you know, technology advances and everything. There is a better solution out there nowadays. And from what I've read, everybody is going this route. And uh, even the conversion companies, um, they all agree. I think they're all using it now, or they offer it with their products. And that is my sponsor, Swap Helper. It's a company owned by Lewis Beyer. I hope I pronounced his name right. But he has invented this, this magic little box here, which does all the work for you. Comes packaged like this. And it's a very good quality material that he's used. Uh, you know, high-end connectors with uh, you know weather weatherproof seals. Um, he's created this magic little box right here, which takes the factory Cummins uh, Hall effect sensor and converts the signal into two variable reluctance sensors, which is required by Ford, both the uh, tachometer signal and the cam position signal, and does all the synchronization. All the magic happens in this little box. You don't have to worry about it. And it's so simple to hook up. All there are seven um, seven connections, which is basically these down here at the bottom. These are all the Cummins um, sensor connectors for the um, Hall effect sensor, and these four top wires are just the um, the power and the output signals from the two sensors on the truck. So today. We're going to hook this up and uh, get it ready to go. Uh, once I get my engine fired up and plugged in and everything, my tachometer will, will work like it's supposed to. So let me uh, let me show you how easy this is. And thanks for uh, Lewis Byer for sending this over. I really appreciate it. It's going to make this uh, this job way simpler than what it would have been. I'm going to gather up information on the uh, Cummins engine. I've got a 96 Cummins engine, which I'm going to match up my hall sensor to match the, uh, the 96 Cummins engine so I can tell... Uh, what wires I need to cross-reference to hook these up correctly. And I'm going to um, also uh, get a wiring diagram um, for my 08 um, F250 so that I can uh, tell where I want to place these wires and what I need to use to, uh, to match everything up. Okay, um, so at first I went and started getting the, uh, the shop uh, manual and looking up the wiring diagrams, but... I should have read the directions first because uh, he includes the wiring diagrams in here. Uh, I'm telling you, it couldn't get much easier. And as for like every every scenario, at 03 and up, uh, common rail connector connectors, uh, 12 valve connectors, he's got it all spelled out right here uh, to make it really easy for you. 
looks like all the homework's already done. It's just a matter of, it even shows you how to properly solder the wires together. And um, was really cool. I mean, he even thinks about little things like uh, shrink wrap. <laughs> Includes a shrink, shrink wrap. That's pretty rare right there. Um, so, just get the wiring harnesses out here. And take the, uh, take my sensor off. Luckily, I haven't bolted it down. I just kind of had it in place with a couple of finger tight nuts on here. I mean, preferably, it'd be nice to start with one, uh, a new sensor, but um, I'm going to go ahead and try to use this one. And if anything's wrong with the setup or anything, I will probably suspect the, the used um, sensor first, and I'll you know probably go ahead and replace that first thing if I run into any issues or any problems. First order of business, which I have forgotten this many times, is to take the shrink wrap out first. And put it on the wires because I don't know how many times I've soldered a connector and went back and said, "Oh man, I totally forgot the shrink wrap." Having to desolder the wire and solder it back to get back together again and put shrink wrap on it. So start by doing that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use it all. Probably cut this off about right here. I don't know, it'd be nice to have those around the engine area. I think I'm just going to snip them right here. Signal wire is the gray and black. And pretty much gray goes to gray and black. And the black and light blue is my ground. And that leaves me the white, which is my sensor positive. goes to the purple wire. Saw to get a little, a little crazy on this one wire here. And those should be Nice and protected now. Harness. I'll have to have to buy some uh, shielding. Some of this uh, this plastic uh, shielding. I forget what they call it, but I'll have to buy some of this. Some of this to um, cover all of the wiring with. And that will take care of the uh, Cummins side. Okay, and he recommends um, setting a gap for the sensor here of 49 hundredths to 51 hundredths. So I'm going to pick 50 and uh, set mine. Check it one more time. Yep, I think I'm right on. All right, I'm just going to check the dip switches. Um, he's got settings for different vehicles and I uh, just want to make sure it matches my vehicle. Um, the instructions say that it comes already set for an, an 08 F250 with a 6.4, 6.0 engine. Okay, once everything is set, which it is, basically all of my switches are off. I reinstall the cover. It says be careful not to over tighten the screws. I think that place in the firewall right back here is a, is a nice spot. There shouldn't be any moisture back there and um, should be away from the turbo. The turbo would be down this area. So it should be away from any kind of heat down there. And uh, I can also keep the leads that go up here to the uh, crank position sensor and the cam posi uh, position sensor um, short. It's probably better instead of... Um, I wanted to take the leads out. Uh, you saw me do this before take the leads out and I just uh, push the pins and pop them pop them out of the way uh, probably should have left those in there and just snip the wires and then uh, you know block the wires off the reason I say this is because the pins in the uh, computer will be sticking through those little holes right there and kind of exposed to the weather where they could corrode and stuff I mean it's not going to make a difference as far as the way it runs or anything I just think having the leads in there and having the wire plugging the hole uh, probably, yeah, probably a little bit better solution than in uh, popping the pins out. 
But the good thing about having the pins pop out, I can just, if I need it again, I can just put them right back in there and uh, it'll be just like factory again. If I find this Velcro doesn't hold up, I'll go back and, uh, you know, secure it with some screws. But I'm thinking I'm going to use a good portion of this Velcro, at least at least half of it or so. This is uh, industrial strength Velcro, so hopefully that'll help. <laughs> we'll see. The instructions say to uh, wire the ground uh, directly to the negative on the battery, and um, this does this lead goes directly to the battery. So I think I got a good solid connection there, and also without being excessive with the wiring, I got to find me a uh, switch lead for the positive. I'll have to track that down in a minute. And, uh, just have these two wires right here. And as far as the instructions say, uh, the orange wire is the crankshaft position sensor and the blue wire is the camshaft. One pair should be for the crankshaft, one pair should be for the camshaft. And this right here, uh, YEVT, is yellow and violet. Should be that wire right there. Should connect that to the orange. I guess that's violet. It's hard to tell, but it definitely goes to the um, goes to the camshaft crankshaft position sensor, and the other one is uh, brown and blue, which would be that right there, brown and blue. Those two wires. That one goes to the camshaft. About right there. And cut these leads right there. Just have one wire to hook up the switched power on. I got it from a good source that I need to tap into this number 12 wire right here. It's blue with an orange stripe. It's the only one I see in there. And that should uh, supply me um, power with a um, power and run and start. And I want to uh, wire in this relay so that um, I'll have switch power um, and run and start. And um, I'll be able to supply power to the swap helper and um, and other items underneath here, and I'll have a convenient uh, source. So um, I'll start by uh, connecting um, pin 86 to this um, blue and orange wire. Relay. That's the control. The relay. And then I'm going to tap in, uh, let me see the other lines. I've got a constant constant 12 volt supply. So for my 12 volt constant, uh, constant uh, 12 volt power supply, I'm going to add a 20 amp fuse just in case, uh, you know, something goes wrong. So the little blue and, uh, blue and red wire switches the relay on and the relay switches this constant 12 volt power line right here and energizes this wire right here and I'm gonna have a, a few other accessories I think uh, uh, was it cruise control stuff like that um, you know like fuel pumps and all that kind of stuff um, can use this wire right here to energize uh, using 12 volt and uh, start and run so this will be powered on start and run and um, from, from right now, to uh, power up the swap helper, I am just going to uh, I'm just going to combine these two wires, and I'm not going to solder them because I know I'm going to have other things that I have to connect. But this will be a reminder of how to power that, and I'll just kind of uh, kind of twist them together for right now, so I'll know where it goes later.
And of course, I'm going to go back and organize all this so it's nice and neat and compact and whatever. That pretty much concludes the uh, the wiring of the swap helper. And uh, that puts me ahead, ahead of the game as far as I'm concerned. That saved um, probably a lot of headaches and was actually way easier than I expected. And in fact, the, the hardest part about this thing <laughs> was wiring up my, uh, my relay here. And uh, the instructions from, um, from Swap Helper were, were super clear. So I would not hesitate to, uh, to buy one of these as far as the install goes. Once I get the engine in here, we'll, uh, we'll check the tack out and uh, read the computer and see if the, uh, see if the um, camshaft and crankshaft are uh, synchronized. Because I we can uh, we can actually see it on the computer, but this uh, this will get me going right here. So yeah, I'll tidy all this up later. But uh, that's uh, that's a lot of wiring already done, and um, some of this stuff over here is going to disappear also. So um, don't let it scare you, especially when there's stuff out there like uh, like this tack adapter, which makes um, makes this job way easier. So. All right, uh, next job, we're gonna fire the engine up. So stay tuned, guys. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.